Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to make lines and I don't know, all the different things you need to know about using these borders or strokes or lines, whatever you want to call them. Plus I'll also show you how to kind of like change everything at once because at the moment everything defaults to this kind of like white line with the gray border. I'm going to show you how to do some cool shortcuts to kind of copy the appearance of this and match it over here. All right, let's jump in. Okay, adding a stroke uh, is easy. Well, basically everything comes with a stroke. Draw a rectangle and look, you get a stroke around the outside. Okay, to adjust the size of the stroke, let's start with something simple actually. Let's uh, go back to this rectangle here. Command three, zoom in on the thing you've got selected. Maybe back it off just one. Okay, uh, so with it selected, you can see I've got a border, turn it on. Okay, so they call it border here. It's normally referred to as a stroke, but I'm going to call it stroke because that's what I know it by. And um, we're going to pick a color for it that we can see. Okay, and the size is there. We can change it to zero. Okay, or we can bump it up. Now you can just type it in here. So if I want 10 points, I can hit 10 and hit enter. Often it's kind of handy for any of these like little fields that have type in it is I can click in here, see my little cursor is flashing and then I can use the up and down arrows. So up to add, because often at this design stage you don't know what you need. You know, if you know it needs to be five later on, great, type it in. But often at the beginning you're like, eh, about, yeah, there you go. So I'm gonna use two. So you can, just as another little interesting tidbit, is if you hold shift and use up, it goes in chunks of 10. So you see, if you hold shift and use the up arrow, 32, 42. Okay, and that works on everything. If I've got this and I'm like, I just want it to be a little bit bigger. 16, just use my up arrow. Up, 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 up. Hold shift and go from 22 to 32, 42. Okay, and that's in any of these. You want to move it over one pixel? Up. Pixel at a time. Hold shift, bam, moves across loads. Totally wrecked it. I have no idea what that's meant to be or where it's meant to be, but you get the idea. Okay, so our border slash stroke. You can obviously do dashes. So I want a space of five pixels, okay? And it's kind of defaulting to five of the dash and then a gap of five, but you can adjust that. You might put that as 15 oh, or just one, <laughs> five. Okay, so that's dashes. And um, I'm gonna go to zero and a gap of zero. There you go. Okay, so adding strokes, let's add a line through the middle. Now, um, we're gonna use this, the line tool. Okay, and so I'm gonna click on this and I'm going to click, hold and drag from this side. Okay, and I want to again go black. So I'm gonna click on the color, go like this. Okay, remember just drag it past that corner. And then the size, I'm gonna go up one and that's gonna be my black kind of line through it. Now, it's very common to maybe not write product shot. I'm gonna delete that and just draw a line through this box here and a line through a box is kind of like secret designer code for placeholder image that the image is going to go we're reluctant to put images in at this wireframe mode kind of like the reason we don't want to use colors and fonts is we end up in a conversation about what image we should be using is it the right image um whereas we just want a really rough really quick wireframe to either get signed off by the client or to do some testing with just some real basic quick testing so We'll put a placeholder image in here. Now, one thing you're gonna get driven mad by is every time you draw a line, at the moment, you can't change the defaults. Man, it kills me about XD, but hey, that's the that's what we got. Um, you might in the future see if there's a way of changing defaults, okay? Um, but at the moment, the easy way to get around it is to do one of a couple of things. One is just to duplicate, the, see this line here? I could grab it, duplicate it, and I can rotate it. Now see this little little dot in here? We kind of saw, where is he? There we go there. He does nothing. You can drag it over and try and line it up or just, can you see over here, there's like a reflect. And there's a reflect horizontal and vertical. You can do that to, to duplicate it. Another nice way is something called copy and paste properties. I'm gonna delete that one. So this one here, this line here, he's got what I need. Okay, so I can go to, just use my shortcut, Command C on a Mac, Control C on a PC, just regular old copy. Instead of just pasting though, and then kind of moving it and flipping it over, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna delete that, is we've copied it, great. I'm gonna click on this other thing, okay, that's this one that's wrong, wrong size, wrong color, and there's an option in here that says edit paste appearance. Ooh, you'll learn that shortcut eventually, okay, and it just means that, yeah, you can copy and paste appearance. Okay, and let's say that we want, we've still got it copied, I can click on you. How do I select more than one? 
That's right, hold shift, I can click both of these. And then using my sweet shortcut, on a Mac it's a Command Option V, on a PC it's Control Alt V, or you can go up to the edit menu. And look at that, it doesn't really matter, it's remembered that the stroke was black, and it doesn't really matter if the stroke was on this or if it's on the buttons. Okay, so you can select big bunch of stuff and kind of apply that appearance. Does that make sense? Am I getting too much detail too early in the course? Oh, well. Um, the other thing is we're here now. So what you can do is you can say, actually, I like this, but I've ended up picking uh, black because I'm allowed to use one color. Okay, but let's say that I've got something over here. Type tool, other thing. And it is some other font. Okay, it's this and it's I don't know, 10 point and it's the wrong color. Okay, you can do the same thing. Select it, go to copy, just regular old copy, and then select this one. And you can go to edit or use a shortcut or right click it. Remember, loads of ways to the same place. Look at that, it does it for fonts as well as um, you know, rectangles, fills, borders around the outside, fonts copy and paste appearance. All right, so those are my lines there. I've got some strokes there. Let's look at some other strokes. We're gonna put that little burger menu in the top right hand corner. So I'm gonna zoom in a bit so we can see what I'm doing. Remember that's Command Plus or Control Plus on a PC. I'm gonna grab my little line tool and I'll draw a line, bloody gray thing. <laughs> that is one pixel. And in mind, I'm gonna go back to my selection tool and I need three of these. Okay, so one thing that I kind of just glossed over there though is I grab the line tool. If you click and drag out, it'll probably get close to being straight. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> okay, like we did before, remember with the rectangle tool or the ellipse tool, if I hold down shift, it puts it into a perfect height and width. Okay, E for the ellipse tool, hold down shift, perfect height and width. That same tool, when drawing a line, okay, we'll make it straight. So let's delete all that junk, L for the line tool and then click, hold and drag, okay? And if I hold down shift, watch, snap, okay? It wants to go straight. Well, it wants to lock into kind of different degrees. So like different, is it 90 degrees? 45 degrees. So there, 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 there. I'm holding shift down the whole time. I'm not let go of my mouse and I can get something straight. There you go. Okay, I'm gonna get him into position. I'm gonna say uh, duplicate you. I'm using my alt on a PC drag or option on a PC drag. I'm gonna do another one. And what you'll notice is, can you see, oh, it says, oh, do you want this to be exactly 11 pixels like the one above it? You're like, yep, I do. Good work. So this is going to be my little burger menu or nav sandwich or, I don't know, mobile navigation icon. Whatever you want to call it, these are these little stripey lines. It's going to allow me to do a couple of things. First of all, I'm going to use my size wise. For me, it was kind of about 75% was my nice kind of like roughly the right sort of size on my phone as compared to my screen. So get your nav sandwich kind of the right, most people call it the burger menu. I call it the nav sandwich. I heard that earlier on and it stuck with me. <laughs> I might be the only one calling it a nav sandwich, but here you go. And so you're looking at it at this sort of size, you're like, no, oh, the stroke weight's too low. So I can go here, I'm gonna stroke size two. Is that about right? Yeah. And it kind of matches everything else I'm doing. Maybe up one more. I'm gonna, that's too big. Remember, you should be testing on your phone. But I'm gonna zoom in, uh, Command or Control 3, okay, to be on the thing you've got selected. We'll zoom right in, a bit too close. I'm gonna zoom back a little bit, because I wanna show you a few other things. So, A, we're gonna pick black, and also select these guys and these options here. So this happens, so we've got this unfortunately named first one, and that's the default. That's where the line kind of just ends and butts up to the end. Okay, so the next one is the round cap. Look at that. Your line is this long, but it kind of circulates over the end. You can see what's going on. <laughs> and there's the square end as well. Okay, so there are times where you use all of them, mainly just these first two. Okay, I'm gonna use rounded caps because it looks kind of pretty uh, and it matches my rounded corners. And I'm kind of starting to creep into the adding design where we should be really just keeping it simple for our navigation. But hey, you're not the boss of me, I'm the boss and I can decide to put rounded corners on for like. You can see there it seems too thick, but let's go back out to 75 and my computer seems about the right size. Yours might be 100%, so just still feels a bit big. Now, you can adjust them all. I can select them all and just go like something like that. There's no official size, okay? Um, but you might go and check somebody else's icons to get a 
you know, if you're finding it really tough to draw three lines that looks like a real normal kind of nav menu, go and check other people's online what they've used. Another thing while we're here is I'm kind of sticking to lines. So lines through this is pretty common, but actually it would be common to put an icon in here instead of these lines. So um, we'll do icons later in the course, but I wanted to, while we're here talking about lines and placeholder images, I Googled it, there it is there. It'd be common to put an icon like this. You don't have to draw it. I'll show you later on how to get most of these uh, for free from places, um, but you might get rid of those lines and dump that icon in there. All right, that is all I've got to talk about about strokes. Um, yes, I'm going to get these texts to match. So I'm gonna select all of them holding my shift key and say you, my friend, are gonna be black. Cause I'm going to fix that. Actually, I'm gonna select this. Remember, copy U command command option V on a Mac, control option V on a PC. And what I actually might do is bring it to the front. There's many ways. Use the way that you like. I'm a shortcut nerd, so command shift, square brackets to the front. Oh no, <laughs> the text is in front of, the text is behind it. You to the front, you behind there. There we go. Um, that's an interesting point. Um, let's say I want to move this back one, not behind, I want to move it behind this, but not that. So we, you might have seen it in there. I can have this selected instead of saying right click, send to the back, which goes behind everything. You're like, no, 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 just behind the circle. You can say send it back wood. There you go. And it will go back just one level. Okay, so you can kind of go backward a few different times depending on where you need your layer order. Okay, um, again, black and somewhere like that. All right, um, that is it. Let's get on to the next video. Hi there, my name is Dan Scott. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like, uh, subscribe to the channel, and if you wanna go further with Adobe XD, there is, I have a full course, there'll be a link in the description, it's called Adobe XD Essentials. There'll be a card up here you can click as well. Uh, but yeah, carry on with your day, enjoy, and I might see you in the full course.